Fresh from metamorphosis, this ancient insect sits waiting to test out new wings. They called her the Wooden Wonder. Throughout her transformation, she's beckoned these brave men near, drawn perhaps to hold on to some sliver of youth, glued somewhere between the plywoods. When you touch one of these things, when you've flown it for quite a long time, it's part of you, and you're part of it. It just fits on like a glove. When you bottle yourself in the seat, but you don't have to think too much, you know what to do, and do it. The de Havilland Mosquito was flown by the Royal Air Force and its allies during World War II. The B-35 was a low-altitude bomber. To make her lighter, the Mozzie, as it was affectionately called by her crews, had little defenses. Instead, she relied on maneuverability and speed. Very fast. If you were being chased by the Germans at the end, you certainly got up to 400 miles an hour if you could. If not, you got out and pushed. The squadron that I was on never flew higher than 50 feet. At that time, I didn't even have a driver's license. And this was like saying to some young fella, here's a Ferrari, go, go drive it. You know, it was incredible. <laughs> In 1941, the first Mosquitoes were built in just 22 months, from design to delivery. And although Bill Ingram and his crew breathed life back into her, they don't know when she'll soar again. When the weight of the paperwork equals the weight of the airplane, it'll, it'll be ready to fly by then. This North Saanich hangar has hosted hundreds of restorations, but Mike admits this one's a once in a lifetime. And the best part? Watching it grow. You know, just watching all the systems get put into it and, uh, you know, watching it when you put power to it and see it come to life and landing gear start moving and flight controls start moving and instruments lighting up. The Mosquito was perhaps the most versatile World War II plane ever built. Some performed high altitude reconnaissance, others were fighters, but her specialty was daylight bombing raids. We were always flying low anyway. And he was quite low, as you can gather. Then he clipped and took off the top of the mast of the minesweeper, complete with a flag. An enemy aircraft came along by itself, so I tried to chase it. Looks like a 190, about a thousand yards away. My navigator, who had got married just two days before, was sure nervous, because we were in danger. But we pulled through and uh, we got him before they got us. Uh, about 4,000 feet, the navigator tapped me on the shoulder and said, Skipper, smell something burning? So I looked from the instrument and looked out the window and it just flames pouring back from the stuff. And he, I said, yes, it's us. He said, are you going to bail out? I said, no. Nope. This Mozzie was built at the end of the war, so it never saw active service. Instead, she spent her years mapping northern Canada. Her new owner, a collector in Vancouver, insisted she be painted to resemble F for Freddy, a celebrated bomber flown by a Calgary pilot. Freddy flew 213 missions, more than any Allied bomber in World War II. She's the last of the Mosquitoes, the only restoration built from a single aircraft. It's taken Mike four years and millions of dollars to get here can hardly wait for the day to see it fly. The mighty Mosquito had the lowest loss rate of any RAF bomber, but it almost didn't get off the ground. The Air Ministry didn't want an unarmed wooden bomber. De Havilland built it anyway. In the secrecy of a barn-like hangar beside the old country house, the prototype was fast taking shape. Because of the war, metal was scarce, but wood was plentiful. Instead of sheet metal workers, the war's fastest bomber would be built by carpenters and piano makers. Over 400 companies were building components for the planes, and assembly plants began piecing them together like a child's giant model kit. But these weren't toys, and this was war. It wasn't really a personal kind of a fight because you were fighting a machine. You weren't necessarily aiming at the pilot particularly, or the navigator, so it wasn't quite as personal as, say, the army, where you were shooting at other 
people? When this mosquito's morphing is complete and she's cleared to sting the skies again, you can bet these once brave boys will be drawn here by the roar of her engines because they never really stop being at one with the mosquito. It's in their blood. In North Saanich, I'm Paul Bilestein.